Right, so we've built up this section and I've managed to bend this and unfortunately I'm probably gonna bend it a lot. Now we need to build up the cockpit area. So for this, we need this sprue that contains all these elements. So we'll need Here you can see we'll be using one that has just a flat surface and not the instruments because we're going to be putting a decal here. And I do believe this is some sort of radio. The back wall. And here are all the parts for the cockpit. We will need to trim them down just like I've shown you before. So. Okie dokie. So now we need to test fit all the parts together. This is the cockpit instrument panel that goes right here. So this is the cockpit instrument panel with the front wall. And this is how it's supposed to look. And then we have the seat, the trim wheel, the joystick, and I think this is the radio. Here is where uh, tweezers might come in handy because the parts are really small. Just like before, test fitting before actually gluing them in place is very much recommended. So we'll do this. We'll take the seat. See, the seat has uh, a semicircle here. And we have a semicircle inside here, right there. So we'll just basically put one in the other. Like so. Then we have the back wall. And the rest, headrest, I think, which goes inside this little hole here. And it goes at an angle, so slip it in like this like so see and then of course the back wall goes into the semicircle area in the back and it's slightly at an angle like this then we have the cockpit instrument panel the one that doesn't have any instrument on because it's just flush and a little stub that has this instrument panel on top and you just put it like this and this one actually goes into the holes in the front. Like so. And then we have the joystick. We have to turn it around like this. So facing forward. So the joystick is in. And then we have the trimmer wheel, and the trimmer wheel also has some detail on the front, but no detail on the back. So the back is supposed to be facing on the cockpit wall. So this is the inside, and this will be outside. So the cockpit wheel should be on the inside of the details. Uh, I believe it's like so. Like this, and then this is the radio that also gets attached into the second hole. Okay, so this is a trick. So we know that all these elements kind of go together nicely apart from this little radio thing. And it doesn't go because I think that the um, hole in here is smaller than this actual size on the bottom. So what we can do, one trick, we can use the glue to our advantage in this particular case. Because this glue melts plastic, we can actually enlarge the hole without drilling into it by just putting a little bit more glue inside and this will of course melt the surfaces and make a, a bond. Now, we can just glue all this thing inside because we know that everything fits nicely. Now comes this part. We put a lot of glue right on the hole. So right, this hole is a problematic one. And we'll take our little tweezers 
will try to put force it inside because the glue is now melting the plastic as we speak. And what do you know? Fits right inside. So that's a little top tip for you. Sometimes you can use glue to your advantage. Just make sure you don't overdo it with the glue because it's gonna eat through the plastic. Anyway, we're not gonna be gluing this piece to the cockpit uh, because we need to paint it separately. And that's because we're gonna be adding decals on top and it's much easier to put decals when you're handling this piece in your hand as opposed to being attached to the cockpit area. But we will attach the instrument panel to this little stub. So we'll take a little glue and just put it right on the edge. Here it will flow inside and secure it in place. Make sure that it's flush and that it's somewhat straight, like so. And uh, this is the first portion of the build done. Now it's time for painting. All right, so let's give this model a little bit of life. Uh, for this purpose, we'll be using these three paints. We'll be using these two for the cockpit and this for the bottom section where you have the wheels. Again, we'll be painting this with this paint just one half of the model because the other one's gonna be painted with an airbrush. Um, and uh, we'll be using these two paints to paint the cockpit area. This is uh, some sort of gray, dark brown, which the cockpit is supposed to be in. Uh, and everything can be painted in this paint and then we can just pick out details with black, such as the joystick, the uh, trimmer and the radio. Uh, the rest is basically just cockpit color. Right, so what do you need? We'll need a little paint tray for mixing our paints. We'll need some brushes. You can easily have just one thin brush and one flat brush like this. We'll need some water along with a little bit of alcohol inside to clean the brushes in. Ideally, if you could have it, some sort of an eyedropper with water. This is just water inside. Water and a little bit of alcohol, but mainly just water to dilute the paint. Right, so let's paint the bottom first. Prior to painting, always clean your model. I have here some isopropyl alcohol. Dip the brush inside and I'll just quickly rinse off the inner wheel well. Just do this, just rinse it off. The alcohol will evaporate really quickly and the reason that we are doing this is to degrease the model before painting so that if there's any gunk or residue inside uh, it's not gonna affect the paint job, it's not gonna flake off um, and yeah. Uh, if you don't have primer this is the best way to do it. Also a, a good thing would be to lightly sand the area with like really fine sandpaper something like 3000 grit or even more. Um, that's to ensure that the surface is a little bit um, scuffed up so that the paint has something to hold on. But because this is a very small area, we're not gonna need to worry about this. So we'll paint this. And of course, there's a little bit of a paint here on the front where there's a radiator and this is supposed to be black. So yeah. Right, so we need paint. Shake it up really well. And this one comes in a handy eyedropper form, so you just put a little bit, you don't need a lot. All right, so uh, ideally what you wanna do is thin down the paint. Uh, and that is true for um, any type of application, for brush and airbrush painting. And the reason is that uh, the philosophy behind it is you apply more thin coats than one giant blob of paint because if you have a small model with lots of fine details, such as here, uh, if the paint is too thick, it's gonna cover all this little detail and you won't be able to see anything. So just one drop, two drops of paint, uh, of water, sorry, and that will be fine. We'll mix it just with this brush that we're gonna be painting. You can see the consistency of this paint uh, is really watered down and should be fine. So we have our paint, we have our little model, and this is the area we're gonna be painting and we're just gonna be painting it. So just take your little time, put some paint in. You can be uh, a little bit sloppy here because it's acrylic paint and acrylic paint has a tendency to 
wipe away easily from the surface that you're painting on. And besides, this is gonna be a different color anyway. It's not gonna matter that much. So this is the first pass. Okay, so this is the first pass. As you can see, it, it's, it did it covered, but not entirely. You can see still that here are some light spots. It's because the plastic is showing through. So now we'll just do this same thing again. Um, just plop the paint inside. This, this, so this is the second pass. And this is after the second coat. It's still a little bit light on the inside, so we'll do another, another pass with paint. And you wait until it dries. And this is how it looks after a third pass. And we'll do just a final pass, the fourth pass, just to make sure that we cover everything fairly uniformly. Again, we'll just slap paint in. And now we let it dry. All right, so this is uh, the final pass that we've done. And as you can see, it's a little less shinier than before. It's still shiny here on the corner because I've put a little bit too much paint here, but it's gonna dry out, it's gonna be fine. Um, now we need to just clean up those little edges. I would recommend you to use alcohol and one of these things. Use a cotton bud. But this is a special con cotton bud from Tamiya. They come in a pack of 50 and uh, they're really useful for attaching um, decals, but also they're really useful for cleaning this type of stuff off. Um, the reason that I would recommend you using this ones as opposed to the ones that you have for your, you know, cleaning your ears is because the ones that you use for cleaning your ears, um, it, strands of the cotton bud are really f not that compressed together and they leave marks on the surface, the little strands of uh, cotton behind. These, however, are really compact and they won't leave that. And that's why they're really good for this sort of application. This is basically what you wanna do in the first step. Now we have to flip this thing around and paint the cockpit area. We also need to paint this here on the front uh, with black, we'll do this too. Painting is fun, but letting paint dry, especially if you're hand painting, can be a little bit boring. So how can you speed up the process? Well, by using one of these, a hair dryer. Now be very careful when using a hair dryer on soft plastic um, because it can easily distort it. So what you prof preferably wanna do is if you have a settings on your hair dryer is to put it on uh, low heat. So the lowest heat you have and the lowest fan speed possible. Um, it has to be warm, but not, you know, like, oh my God, I'm gonna melt plastic warm. And what you do is you have your model in your hand on one hand and your hair dryer on the other and just lightly move back and forth the hair dryer and maybe you move the model itself to go into every nook and cranny. And the water from the acrylic paint will evaporate really quickly. I did this all the three times or all four passes, dry out almost completely and I was able to apply another layer of paint. So this is a little bit of a hack if you want to speed up your uh, paint drying process. Right, on the uh, upper side of the cockpit area, the process of painting is basically the same. Um, and because we are layering paint and we're layering lighter paint and darker paint on top, it's not gonna affect the end result. So we do the same thing. We take this little paint tray of ours, we shake this paint really rapidly and we put a little bit of a drop. This is more, well, a little bit more like this. This is pretty, thinned down already and I don't, let me just check. Yeah, this is thinned down already. This is pretty good consistency for painting. If it's a little bit thicker, uh, what you need to do is apply a little more water or a dedicated thinner. Prior to painting, let's clean off every single surface prior to painting. Okay, so now we proceed to painting and this is the same way as with before. We take some paint, load it in the brush 
and then we just go pretty much like this. Slap it all over the place. And now we dry. And this is the second pass. And we repeat this until this whole area is covered. So I'll be coming back when this cockpit is gonna be finished. Okay, for painting the instrument panel and the front wall, you basically have to use a little bit of ingenuity. I have a little alligator clip on mounted on a stick for barbecuing. And basically I just attach it here, hold it in place, and then I'm free to use the paint. All right, so we have done with the basic paint. Uh, now it's time to pick out the details with black. We have the joystick to paint, we have the trimmer wheel, the radio, and this radiator grill here in front. And we have to pick out the detail on the stick of joy. And that's it. Uh, now let's put on the decal. Okay, so we have to attach this decal onto this. So the way to do this is basically take yourself a sharp knife and simply cut out the decal. Now get yourself a glass of warm water. Take your little instrument panel decal, you dunk it inside the water, submerges for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. 8, 29, 30. Let's say that was 30 seconds. And place it on your kitchen paper towel. The decal will come off its base. And then take your little decal, slide it off with your tweezers, and place it onto the instrument panel. Basically, you just kind of place it down. And using your cotton bud, Force it down so that it sits nice and flush. I use a little bit of water to make it sit nice. That's your decal done. Okay, so now we've placed down the decal. Now the last thing to do is basically to attach this front section onto the cockpit. Like so. And then use a liberal amount of glue to glue it in place. And that's the cockpit area finished. All right, so join me back next time when we will continue with this build video. See you then, bye bye.